Yes, there's nothing like the smell of freshly baked bread now. We've had the dolls gym, we've had the dolls disco, but our poor dolls, how can they eat? They don't have a kitchen to cook in. So we thought it's high time we rectified the situation and that's exactly what we're going to do. So to make a kitchen much like our stylish one that you've just seen there, you'll need to get your hands on a large grocery box, you know the usual drill, and cut away two sides. Now these are the sort of grocery box you can get in the supermarket. And uh, once you've cut your sides away, you'll need to cover it in a nice suitable paper or you could paint it alternatively depending on what you would like your dolls to have on their kitchen walls and then hopefully you've retained some of the cardboard if not you need to get a bigger piece of cardboard and cut it to size so you can slot it in to make the floor and once again you'll need to cover it i found a rather superb tile effect um, paper but you can choose whatever suits your needs now there's not a lot of light in the room at the moment so the first thing we need to do is to make a window I, being very keen, uh, went and took a photo of the Blue Peter Garden. And this is actually going to be on our website, so you can download it if you'd like our doll to have the Blue Peter Garden outside her window. Now next, you need to get some card to mount your view onto and stick it on there. And then you'll need to make the window frame. So cut some suitable strips of white cardboard if you want a white window frame and then stick them in place. And that is it really. Your window is ready. I find a thinner window frame in the middle is quite realistic. There we go. Once you've stuck it all in place, it should look like this. Right, so that's the basic room and now it's time to fit our kitchen and add some of those all-important kitchen appliances of the white goods, you know the score. Now first up, I'm going to make a rather smart wood-burning stove, you know the type. And the first thing you'll need to make this is a strong cardboard box, roughly this size. Mine had 240 premium tea bags in your note and I've taped the lid up so it's all nice and secure. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing in sticky back plastic. You could paint it if you want. And you could make the uh, top another colour. I've decided to make my base blue and the top black. And I find black's quite good for when you put your uh, silver hot plates on top, which is what we're going to make next. Now, the hot plate cover is simply, you've probably guessed it, a jam jar lid. So you need two of those. And the actual hot plate is made from a disc of silver cardboard. And you could use your jam jars lid as a template but make sure that the circle is a bit less because you want your hot plate lid to cover it so uh, once you've painted it silver da -da, then you're ready to pop them into place now what we want is so that this opens over that am I making sense and the best way to achieve the hinge effect is to get a bit of tape and then stick that jam jar lid on the top and then if you put your silver circle on top of that I've used sticky back plastic you might want to use glue there we go and once you repeat it you will have two hot plates and it will look like that how good is that now we're ready oh I like that very much to make the oven doors now these can be simply made using some rectangles of cardboard there'll be three doors on the finished product so uh, you'll need to measure what dimensions to cut your doors to and then once you've cut three of those out cut three smaller rectangles and glue the small ones on the big ones then cover in the same stuff that you covered your cooker in and this rather clever door effect is achieved with that lovely edging so once you've got three stick them in place so there's one two and three and any of you who know the style of cooker that we're making will know there's usually a brand name there and i've got a little blue peter ship you could write your name or whatever and there you have our branding right we are ready now to put the handrail along the front which is always handy to hang your tea towels on and this is so easy to make all you need is two bendy straws uh, cut one off so it's a little bit shorter and then if you slot one into the other by squidging the end you can adjust the length as well so that you can uh, stick it on as a handrail and if you can't find a silver straw then uh, you could paint your straw there we go and that is ready to go into the kitchen 
Now, once the cooking is over and the eating, it's the least favourite bit of the proceedings, and that is the washing up. And we've made nearly everything but the kitchen sink. Ho ho! So now we're going to make the kitchen sink. Now, the sink unit is a very trendy one with a single mixer tap. And once again, we start off with a cardboard box. This is slightly smaller than the one I got my tea bags in. And uh, you'll need to cut off two sides, one large side and one end, so you end up with a box that looks like this. And you'll note that if you couldn't find the right size, you could always use the end of a uh, cereal packet because you don't need these sides. Next, we need to make the basin. And uh, this is a cream cheese pot. You'll have to play around to see what fits where, but that slots rather nicely on top. But you'll notice there's a gap here. So uh, we need to uh, pop a strip of cardboard there. and. Uh, you need to measure one that fits and uh, bend the two edges down so that it will slot nicely on top. Now uh, you'll notice we haven't got rid of any of the nasty branding yet. So once again you'll need to cover the whole thing and that's exactly what I've done using the blue to match the cooker. And uh, I covered the top bit with a nice bit of sticky back plastic and I punched that hole merely using a pen and then pushing a paintbrush through and then once it's big enough, which is about finger size, I can show you the ingenious tap mechanism. Guess what this is? It's not a mixer tap, it is just the top of a liquid soap dispenser and that will slot nicely into the hole that we've made. I haven't put my tap down properly. There we go, that's better. And there, you can put anything you want under the kitchen sink. I found an old lid, which I used as a bucket. OK, so that is the oven and the kitchen sink done and dusted. And on the next show, we're going to show you how to make this rather stylish silver fridge, the worktop and some other bits and bobs too that make the whole thing look so realistic. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. A yep. bit of a crowd gathered to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you can see we've been joined by everybody once again. Uh, next time on Blue Peter, make sure you join us because we'll be revealing details of a new competition where you can win the chance to be a judge on the programme. <laughs> and I hope all of you are going to be watching because Simon and I are going to take uh, a trip to Germany to visit Kolditz, the eerie prisoner of war camp. Now then, they are absolutely beautiful. Oh my god. They're like big balls of fluff. <laughs> It's, it's, so it's like an enormous cute. pillow. Yeah. You know what? They remind me of a cross between a polar bear and a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. does that make Good sense? Skills. One of those big fluffy <laughs> anyway, things you put around your neck. Well, I we'll think that's it for soon. today to see you soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Nine year old Rachel Dennis from Derby grew the Blue Peter ship out of Cress.